Hello and greetings. My name is Oke Ndebe, and I'd like to welcome you to the Offside Musings podcast on behalf of my co-host, Emeka Onyagwa. In this episode, we have a truly outstanding legal luminary, uh, indeed one of the most distinguished legal practitioners, uh, not just in Nigeria, not just on the African continent, but indeed in the world. Uh, Dr. Olisa Bakaba is our guest today on our occasional se uh, series on civil liberties and human rights in Nigeria. Dr. Olisa Bakaba, um, as I said, um, in Nigeria, actually, and around the world, Dr. Olisa Bokoba needs no introduction. But in the tradition of, uh, of, of, um, of the world, we're going to try to give a very minuscule uh, introduction. Dr. Bokoba is uh, a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association. Indeed, he was the president from 2006, I believe, to 2008. Yep. And he's a founding partner of Olisa Abokaba and Associates, a leading maritime specialist law firm in Lagos. He's also the founder of Nigeria's foremost human rights organization, the Civil Liberties Organization. Uh, he became known through the work, his work in human rights and democracy movement in Nigeria. He is also a founder of the United Action for Democracy and has uh, been active in so many other uh, human rights organizations. Uh, Dr. Lisa Abakoba has received numerous awards for his uh, work, uh, both as an attorney, as a lawyer, as well as a human rights activist. These awards include the Roger Baldwin Medal for Civil Liberties, Human Rights Award of the German Association of Judges, the Etching Peace Award, and he's been nominated and proclaimed one of the 15 great legal practitioners of distinction in Nigeria. It is a special honor. It's a special privilege to have you as a guest in this episode of the Offside Museums podcast. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, okay. And Emeka, yes. thank you very much. Yes. Thank yes. you. I feel yes. honored to be on the show. Thank you. Yes, mm. yes. So let us start from, uh, more or less from the beginning, we will say, um, your late father was um, a lawyer of distinction and in fact rose to be chief justice of the old Anambra state. So at what point in your life did you determine that you wanted also to be a lawyer? Mm, actually, I wanted to be a soldier. Because I was oh. a <laughs> you would have been bloody dangerous. <laughs> Because I was a I was a Biafran soldier. I was yes. a child soldier. Yes. And, uh, I sort of like enjoyed it, you know, even though it was a bitter sweet, uh, sweet experience. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I like the discipline, the uniform, the tradition. So at the end of the war, returning back to regular civil life was sort of not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to go off and join the Nigerian Defense Academy. Mm -hmm. At this point, my old man was Chief Judge of Chief Justice of, no, East Central, not a number, East Central East State. East Central, East Central State, yes. yes. East Central State. And Besada was the GOC of the first, what was it called again? Uh, the first division. The division, yes. Yes, yeah, so the old man told me a story. Well, I've spoken to General Besada. He's assured me you will have a place at the Nigerian Defense Academy. Yes. And as you are waiting for the admission, why don't you just go to University of Nigeria? That was, a very, <laughs> that was a, very, a very big call. So, yeah. as I went, first year, second year, I said, well, what about the NDA? Yes. So that's the Is way uh, I, 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 I stumbled into law, which I'm not. So, so, mm. so let me, let me, did your father, was it 
an act of deception or yes, did yes. he really intend for yes. you to <laughs> I've not told you there was a conspiracy my dad and uh, mid the, 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 oh the my god yeah. So we're looking at an accidental lawyer. My dream was to be a soldier because wow. I was in the Vietnam <laughs> Army. As I said, we had a rough time, but I sort of took into, uh, I liked the tradition and then mm-hmm. I wanted to continue. Mm, the, uh, deception, uh, the, uh, the deception made me an accidental lawyer. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, made a, you made a phenomenal career out of me. Yes. That's an accidental. Oh, my God. That's an accidental. So, well, I, I, in light of that, like, what thing would you say has motivated? I mean, you had to have found some motivation to why have finished and kept on and continued and have such a, in my, in my opinion, I think it will give us the same. You've been a morally upright, um, one of the few as well, a morally upright lawyer that um, seems to have a compass, which is um, very, very uncommon, I mean, to say the least in Nigeria today. So what has motivated you to not just stick to law, but stick to at least some principles of, of some sort. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, so as I went along, you know, first, second year, then I began to also enjoy it, you know, because law is highly uh, uh, conceptual and theoretical. So I, I then got into it and then I sort of decompressed out of, you know, the soldier thing mm-hmm. and then to finish <laughs> off. But then I, I found that I was quite a good student, you know, mm-hmm. I was able to just miss first class. So mm-hmm. uh, then mm-hmm. law school came, then uni abroad and coming back, just trying to find my feet in law. And then suddenly there was this guy called, good friend of mine, uh, Clement one called. Now I think I was about eight years at the bar. Yes. And we were doing things like, uh, okay, regular lawyering. And then Clem had had some experience with prisoners in Enugu. So he came and joined me as a youth co And then we were talking about how to deal with uh, these prison issues. And we discovered that it was something that had to be done institutionally. It wasn't something lawyers mm. could do. Mm. So in the birth of uh, the civil liberties organization. So that was the, that, that was the essential motivation for, you know, uh, uh, for the formation of CLO, which in the beginning was strictly a service for people in prison awaiting trial mm. people. Mm. I remember the first guy we, we, we took on, a guy called Joseph Odobo, who had been in prison for uh, 10 years or so, and Dabiloro, who was also part of us, uh, he was then a guardian, a correspond, judicial correspondent yeah. for the guardian. That's and right. Said, we got this guy, you know, could you help him? Now, we were successful. Next thing was a batch of people, relations coming to our office in Apapa. And so I thought, I thought Clem, you, see, you are right. We, we, we can't deal with this thing on the basis of a law firm. We need an institutional process. So mm-hmm. then we had the civil liberties organization entirely devoted to not democratic or pro-democracy work, simply mm-hmm. how to get people out of prison. That was the basis. Mm-hmm. But then as we expanded our work, along came um, the late uh, Imai Zazu, Oh, yes. With his uh, student union background. And said, no, you see, mm. your, 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 your premise is too narrow. Mm. All right, so you fetch guys out of prison and they go right back. So it's mm. not going to work that way. What you need is a democratic process. And there's no way a military government can guarantee all that. So why don't mm. we just expand it? That mm. was how we shifted and broadened our scope mm. to a full service, you know, human rights uh, organization. Then along came Ghani and then Beko, who then also added the point that, yeah, human rights is nice, but what about mm-hmm. adding democracy? So mm. we now started the campaign for democracy. So in a nutshell, it went from focus on the prisons to human rights to democratic struggle. So mm-hmm. that's the, those are the triples of our uh, um, engagement. Wow. 
Well, it, it's interesting because I was going to ask uh, so ask you to tell a story about the backstory to the formation of the CLO, which in a sense you've done with mm -hmm. great with great economy, which is, I think, the hallmark of a great lawyer. You've told <laughs> a, an amazing story <laughs> in in such a short time. Um, so we're going to get hopefully to fleshing out um more of the story of the founding of the CLO, how you were sure. able to uh bring in all these different actors and how you were able to uh expand uh right. the mandate, the original mission. But you know, you you were born into relative privilege. And sure. a lot of people from your background would be easily admitted into this exclusive club of um, of eaters, those who mm. are called the, st <laughs> the stakeholders. You know, when yeah. I hear the word stakeholder, I think sure. about steak that we eat. You know, so Nigerian <laughs> stakeholders are those who, who are eating, holding and eating the steak of the country. <laughs> you know? Sure. You know? Sure. So you could have easily uh, sure. become um, a stakeholder. But yeah. I guess um, your work... Um, in human rights, it has meant a kind of class suicide that um, you have renounced this stakeholding um, uh, 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 group that mm -hmm. uh, that your birth and your growth and your privilege entitled mm -hmm. you uh, to mm -hmm. membership of. So, mm -hmm. what what is it that? Mm -hmm. um, made you choose to be this advocate? What is it within you that made mm -hmm. you choose as Clement Huanghua, who is a dear friend, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, I knew Clement actually from his university days. Yeah. Um, so but what, what was it that activated this commitment on your part to, uh, to be a fighter for human rights and civil liberties? Mm -hmm. The one was the actual actually uh, we, the the uh, we, we've lost your we've lost your video by the way. But I can oh, see no, right. I'm still seeing though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Still, okay. It's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so uh, the Bakawa family has had a long tradition of um, passion for 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 people. That's the way I put it. My grandfather, mm -hmm. you know, was very compassionate. He got a big land with mm -hmm. all his brothers. So in Nonicha today, if you go there, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's known as Umar's mm -hmm. village. All the Bakabas are there. My old man yes. was strong in, you know, in a, in 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 a, this type of work. But well, his commitment was to the Red Cross. So he was known as the leader mm -hmm. of the Red Cross in eastern Nigeria. So he built a lot of mm -hmm. motherless babies' homes. So his his uh, title is Ochendo. That is the person who provides oh. shade to children. Yeah. Yes. So I can draw yes. that back. That's because I don't really know. So the question you ask me, I'm just people ask me all the time, and I I use this you know story to say maybe that's why. But I think one of mm -hmm. the other um, maybe more eminent point was in my uh, Biafran story experience. I ended up in jail in the Biafran oh. detention because. My old man was at in Ozuakali, and he just got fed up of running from one place to the other. So when the Nigerian soldiers came in and found him, it was a big capture for Nigeria. So off he went to him. Mm. I didn't even know. Off he went, and he was, for Nigeria, a big catch. So he became Solicitor mm. General, Attorney General, and then the first judge. I had no clue. Mm -hmm. So one day, mm. uh, a guy called Major Libu, the Ilu, the Alilu of Imota Battalion, Strike Force Division in um, Ohafia. He asked me, are you? Uh, I said, yes. That was what put me in detention. Oh! So off I went to, yeah, so off I went to be a friend detention at a very horrible place called Ntueke, near, oh. near uh, Olu. Mm -hmm. And I was there for uh, nine months, and I, I, wow. I saw the Whoa. most horrific things. I had a guy on my right side. He had this thing called EB. Oh, so, yes. Okay. Yeah. Solar scrotum, yeah. And all kinds yeah. of people every day, 
uh, they would they would heave out uh, prisoners, you know, to bury just uh, down the road. So I immediately got attracted to Clement's um, issue about concern for prisoners. So that's where I got it from. Mm. And as I said, it then moved on to the larger human rights and democracy. So that's what I, yes. I can. That's the only way I can describe it. Mm -hmm. I cannot say, oh, I had this uh, epiphany. Um, mm -hmm. I'm now uh, 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 soul on the road to Damascus, and I become mm -hmm. poor. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so that's what I can paint of my journey mm -hmm. to the human rights uh, issues and concerns. Yeah, let me jump in with with just a quick comment. Mm -hmm. uh, Chief Abokat, the story you just told about your mm -hmm. detention during the war, which I didn't know about, Mm -hmm. is is it's such a moving story that i don't know if you've considered writing your memoir of the your experience during the war Actually, because yeah please you must you know the same yeah, thing i told clement when yeah. you know clement one walk when we had a conversation with him that he sure. should write his story this story sure. needs to be told and that's I'll be pressing, you know, I'll be Yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, sure, sure. I will please. Uh, yeah. I will begin to consider oh my gosh. You know, yes. Yes. Put it all the thought down. Yeah, I have yeah. to Kindly, please, you should. I, I would. I, I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm sure amongst the millions of people would appreciate it as yes. well. Yes. <laughs> and, and Mecca, and Mecca is actually a, a, a history buff, so oh, right. he's, okay. he's a PhD okay. student in history wow. at the moment. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's yes. great. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I just go about him on my campus. Don't, don't. <laughs> but it's, um, it is interesting to, to find out that you and and it's always for for everybody that went into civil liberties during the military re regime um when i was um okay that, that's something that's called but for everybody that went into civil liberties during the military re regime um especially late in Bangladesh time or middle of Bangladesh, uh, where he probably fancied himself as um a dictator for life at, at least according to him if you go by his resources right um <laughs> I mean, it's it's it. it we would love to know what it was like um, from setting up the city, which you've described, but you know, drawing people into the organization. How you drew people in, you collaborated with people to um, get things done, and mm -hmm. you know, might just staying alive. I think at the mm -hmm. minimum. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. The big credit goes to the late Mizers, actually, because I didn't know him at all. Uh, uh, students yeah. Union, the Students Union movement, I wasn't really, really very active. I was active, but not the way that Emma and the late Chima uh, um, Obani and Co. Were. So, Obani. Uh, Abdul, mm -hmm. yes, Abdullah was the guy who was part of the founding team when uh, Peter, Peter Benningson, who the founder of um, Amnesty International, came to Nigeria. And mm -hmm. we had lunch for him in my office, just seven of us. So he was the one who gave mm -hmm. us the, 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 um, what's the word, the emotional content about how to stay with this sort of work we're embarking on. Told us about the letter writing he did for, you know, uh, prisons of conscience in Portugal, blah, blah, blah. Give us good advice. And so, uh, we then, see, I must be honest with you, there was no, there was no, uh, there was no, uh, what's the word now? There was no really thesis on how the CLO was formed. It was just moving along. No, bl was, no blueprint. No blueprint. So along mm -hmm. comes Zazu, who is an intern in um, in uh, The Guardian. And they might, I would say, you know, I there's mean, a guy. Ab Abdeloro. Abdeloro. There's a guy in uh, The Guardian who was a uh, former president of of of, of uh, nuns. I said, all right, let me see him. So he came. Mm. Lo and behold, I was even from my town on each other. So we just chatted. Yes. And of course, as president of nuns, he, he obviously would have known all the presidents of the various universities. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He proceeded to pack all of them. He, 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 to him, I give credit for laying the foundation of the expansion of CLO. Because mm. when he came, he brought 
Larry Honwa, he brought uh, Innocent the late Innocent Kua. He brought, yeah. most important, he brought um, Zazu. Mm. Sorry, yeah. I brought uh, Chima, Chima Obani. Mm. Chima when he came Obani, to my office, yes. Chima was so skinny. I said, what can this guy do? <laughs> 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 so he must have, this guy is going to be the builder of he was mm -hmm. prophetic so wow. chima designated himself as the coordinator of ned the national expansion something nep some mm. something about expanding the cielo so mm. both Ima and chima were the pillars upon which the cielo expanded because they brought mm. in all the ex-student people Residents, secretaries, they were everywhere. Next thing we were everywhere. Then came John Oda on the on the trade union side. So we needed this, you know, kind of uh, fiery radicalism in the CLO. And the next step was mm. Odinkalu. Chidi Odinkalu. Mm. So Chidi Odinkalu yes. now comes in with what we then later called the loony left and the crazy right. So the looting left. <laughs> so the looting left were made up of all the guys from the students' union movement. The crazy yes. right were made up of all the guys who were, you know, intellectually inclined, writing books, researching, and all that. So it was a very hairy combination. And Paul May was in the middle of these two lots, so I had to keep separating because there was a concept <laughs> about which was the best two. I could see that both were useful, you know. So that mm. it was that combination that gave CLO its, mm. you know, its prominence. Yes. Wow. So, um, sort of the story you just told, um, underscoring the critical role played by student unionists. Oh yeah, yeah. In sure. the uh, in the establishment of CLO in its sure. expansion. In the expansion mm. also of its mission, its mandate, and so on, is very right. um, empowering. Mm. And yet, we have come to an era where student unionism uh, in Nigeria is an mm. emasculated phenomenon, Completely. where student union leaders are now uh, essentially um, hirelings of people in government how mm -hmm. speak to this terrible transformation of 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 fortunes in in the mm -hmm. union and i think that that also goes to even the nigerian bar association which used to be extremely strong uh mm -hmm. to the nigerian medical association with people like Beko, uh which mm -hmm. used to be you know quite strong and even the nigerian union of journalists yeah um could you trace the transformation into ineptitude or irrelevance of, of these organizations? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, well, the, there was no doubt that the guys I had, you know, back then on both sides, either the crazy right or the loony left, had a sort of, you know, uh, special calling that propelled them so the way i remember chima bani always talking about you know no negotiation at all no discussion mm. <laughs> in yeah. fact it, it, to move that is to get soiled you know mm. and there was a point which i disagreed you know when beko was beko and them um, femi falana were released from jail by uh, shonicon mm -hmm. all beko wanted to do was to go and thank in the who yes. was then interim leader of the of the government? Oh, thanks very much for bringing us out of prison. The human rights movement was up in arms. I disagree with wow. that. So, but these wow. are friends now. So that tells you the level to which uh, the movement felt that no contact, mm -hmm. no contact at all. So that was mm -hmm. the way in which we worked. So to then see what happens today is a complete mm -hmm. turnaround. But I'll put a I'll put something around all this. You see. In our time, there was a there was a line you drew mm -hmm, in the sand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On one side were the human rights guys. I remember Bacha telling uh, Marwa, "Who are those guys in Lagos?" Mm -hmm. So Marwa landed in Lagos on the twenty seventh of March, nineteen ninety eight, and said he's drawn a line in the sand and he dares us to cross it. That was the 
five little man match we did here. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we could see our enemies, the soldiers. Mm. We were all on this side, and that, that was the line. Now, I mm. think democracy has destroyed all that. Democracy has ethnicized the, the struggle. Mm. So it has turned into the process of civil you know, uh, institutions, MBA, mm-hmm. well, even the church. Mm-hmm. So I guess. it's not what it used to be. In fact, I, when I say this, it looks ironic that it was a lot easier to actually confront the soldiers than yes. the civilians even though yes. there's so-called democratic space. Mm. And that was because we could identify them on the right. So these, these are mm. the guys who needed to fight. Now you can't. Mm. Because you don't, you don't know whether you're in the PDP or in the a Labour Party. or so It's all mixed. That, mm. I think, accounts for the decline. That's my mm. own naive um, reconstruction yes. of why civil society today is extremely weak and why this mm. you know, movement is dead. Yeah, hmm. I, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's naive. I, I actually uh, align with that view largely. Um, hmm. I think for so many reasons, which I guess in terms of the flaws of democracy, it's all accentuated yeah. when you take a look at it. It's not even people that uh, the earliest recorded people that we have that practice democracy talked about mm-hmm. it. Like Socrates talked about the flaws. He wasn't a believer in democracy because of mm-hmm. um, he, he believed that there needed to be a high level of civic responsibility for democracy right. to function um, somewhat, at least, good. Let's put mm-hmm. it that way. And I don't feel Nigeria meets that um, minimum mm-hmm. threshold of of any kind of civic responsibility, just like you've been describing, um, mm-hmm. in terms of all this. Um, the divisions is what the tribal, you name it, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And and the reality, I, I know there's a lot different from then and now, but it's still similar. So to your family, how did they react? Your family, your friends, your drinking partners, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> into, into the civil liberty struggle and, and possibly getting um, uh, permanently, you know, since from the it is that you guys come mm-hmm. with, you know, back, back yeah, in those yeah. steps. Actually, my immediate family, my wife, very strong uh, Catholic, so she just said, Look, if that's what you want to do, I'm behind you. Mm-hmm. Never opposed anything, never even raised. My, it was my old man who sort of said, ah, are you sure this thing won't affect you, you know, in terms <laughs> of you know, clients? And, but, you know, mm-hmm. I'm a Gemini. You know, you know what Geminis mm-hmm. are? Geminis are, mm-hmm. are, are twins. So in yeah. spite of in spite of the fact that I was neck deep in this, mm-hmm. I still sustained my law practice. And when I yes. look back, I said, "Wow, why did I do this?" You know, when I look mm. back today, I was able to be on the streets on one day and in court on the, on the next yes. day. Yes. Actually, on the twenty seventh of March, yes, March nine ninety eight, I was appearing at the court of appeal, mm-hmm. and I remember the court saying, what, "What's all this for?" Because then we had. She did the you know atmosphere with our five million man match. Forget yes. that there was no five million, but we just said five million. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in, in my point is maybe my gen, Gemini spirit enabled me to straddle both worlds, not that yes. effectively in the in the in, in my in my mm. in my work as lawyer, but I kept doing it. Mm. I kept yes. Going. Yeah, so mm. I was in both places. Very challenging mm. when I think about it today, but I did it somehow. Wow. Paid my kids' yes. school fees and all that. Wow. You know? yes. Yeah, sure. So, sure. so in, the, in the time of the, um, the formation of the CLO, yes. Um, yes. there was no internet, there was no, no. email, there was <laughs> no mobile telephone. And Nothing. Nigeria's land telephony was notoriously horrible, uh, horrible is the word. Yes. So how were you able to coordinate your activities in those days? There was, we had runners. I remember Omolade, mm-hmm. one of our runners. So uh, we'll, just, we'll just scribble messages. I remember the guy in, um, in Greece who marathon and he collapsed after he ran to announce victory of the Greeks. So that mm-hmm. was, we had runners, yes, so yes. Something, yes, we had some, something mm-hmm. in Enugu, somebody would run mm-hmm. there by night mm-hmm. bus or whatever. So we had, we had a whole huge host of people, and these were students, very mm-hmm. useful students. Again, tribute to the later uh, Emma and uh, Chima, because, and of course, um, at this point, uh, um, Tore has started coming in. Mm-hmm. 
And yes. then he was president of um, Minelag. He had a whole, I think mm. he gave us about 2,000 people, 2,000 students mm. who were supporting the, the cause, pushing around. If one of the meetings in Joss, we'll send somebody who will do all the arrangements, whatever. Mm. So we had this, you know, this cache of, of, you know, volunteers. And they were mm. interested in the money. Just mm. the, the enough enough money to go to wherever they went. So when I think about it today, I say, wow. Hmm. wow. How do we keep this in life? How do we keep this in going? Your question hmm. is, so, is so pertinent because I myself find it boggling. But hmm. we're also ready to make sacrifice. If you know how many yes. bus rides we did from here to George, from here to Nsuka, there was that commitment. Hmm. That extraordinary commitment. I must tell you, mm-hmm. extraordinary hmm. that you don't find today. So wow. that's how we kept it. That's how we kept that's how we kept the movement. Don't forget, we, wow. we had spread to virtually all the universities. Mm. We had cells and camps and everything. So it was a huge, you know, network of. At the point, we had about mm, something like eighty full-time staff, mm. uh, something wow. like about another hundred volunteers, and then thousands of students across Nigeria. So it made the mm. work easy, but very difficult to coordinate. Mm. Because I had this super efficient and motivated um, uh, 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 students and um, mm-hmm. ex-students. In fact, sometimes I have to beg as well, please, I beg. This one is too much. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so we mm-hmm. had no problem with with the manpower. No pro- and yes. Most were unpaid. Most were unpaid. Mm. It was just mm. stipends to do what they needed to do. Mm-hmm. That has not happened again since um, CLS mm-hmm. formation. The type of yes. commitment I saw is mm-hmm. gone, mm-hmm. totally gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, with, with that being said, I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, with that being said, I mean, when you look at it, what would you say uh, the achievements that you are most proud of um, and what aspects of the struggle would you say um, leave you dissatisfied, unhappy, um, even looking back, um, you know, what you might have done differently if you want to put it that way as well. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, my satisfaction was that I understood what it was. When today, pastors say, uh, I'm on the mountain, you know. Hmm. I never understood that until when I was in this human rights, you know, process. Hmm. Who on the mountain? Mm-hmm. And your food wasn't a problem. We got two, three days, no food. That wasn't the issue at mm. all. We are fired mm. up, but we missed it somewhere. And I, that's the regret I have. Again, mm. don't forget that even though I describe this process, we had big tensions within. Mm. Almost like what you would say about Chris Honey. Sometimes I wonder mm. if Chris Honey didn't die, how would mm. the struggle yeah, yeah, before because he was clearly a radical left mandela was not mm. would he have accepted mm-hmm. the mandela you know process arrangement arrangement so that's where we had tensions now mm. at the end of the what i like to call struggle and democracy had begun to show itself as a possibility there was a major disagreement in the mm-hmm. human rights movement as to what do we do mm. for chima he said, look, our, our task is over. That was a big error. Mm. And in order to resolve what we needed to do, because at this point, uh, the government of um, Abdul Salam had announced an interim political arrangement. Uh, parties had emerged. Do we t- I said, let's take part. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, the human rights movement, you know, it was... A very young movement. Average mm-hmm. age would be 18 to about 22. I was in my 30s. I could see a wider picture. But it was to the eternal uh, uh, satisfaction of the older group, because we were broken into two. The young group and the Abraham and Asoya type group, the older men. They yes. were very happy when we rejected the participation. So they got it because the international community said, whatever you do, you must offer the human rights for democracy movement a seat in the political process. And that seat was the AD. AD did not qualify, mm. but that was the seat. Mm. So whether we would be part of it was the issue. 
So one went to Ghana's mm. place. Ah, but he said, no, we're not going to participate. Too. But no, that's not our job. Unless the government will tell us what happened to Abiola. So we oh. insisted on the SNU, Sovereign National, uh, SNC, Sovereign okay. National Conference, yeah. mm -hmm. and the government of national unity as a condition of our participation. Mm -hmm. Along comes uh, Dr. Uh, Tabo Mbeki, who was in mm. Abuja. So yes. what, there was an opportunity for us to meet him. So ambassador said, look, uh, my president wants to meet you. Is that who? Mbeki? No way, he's a traitor. This is a guy that we know that we lost in Nigeria. <laughs> no way. So hmm. Becky then said, all right, you know what? Could, that, could there be a compromise? On my way back to South Africa, I could come to the airport. I could land in Lagos International. Could you guys kindly meet me there? Let's see what we could do. So we went. Becky was so disappointed that we turned down what today I, 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 I regret was a big opportunity to participate in the process. So that mm. for me was the most devastating strategic error. Mm. And maybe I can't for what we see today because we then pulled yes. out. It was the next cycle in 203 that we said, oh dear, we made a mistake. But then, you know, when God parted the Red Sea, it was easy for. <laughs> so that Red Sea that God parted, by 203, the water had come back. Hmm. So we couldn't climb. We couldn't get in. Hmm. Very few yes. got in. Abu Rubo got in. Very. But if we had gone in in '99, oh boy, all of us would have gone in. So hmm. I think the landscape would have been different. So that's my big regrets. Yes. Well, I'm sure that uh, Mecca, you circle in with another follow up to that. But I wanted to get in. You know, you paid a huge price, huge personal price. Um, as I said, I didn't know you were detained. Uh, during during the Biafran War, but mm. you were detained uh, by the military and yeah, sure. indeed assaulted. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what was your most trying moment uh, in the struggle uh, in terms of the price that you paid? Mm. That was one of it. Uh, the, the most trying moment was just trying to find out the right strategy to confront the military. So again, mm. the loony left but were always mm. very clear what they wanted. But they yes. needed to persuade me because they used to call me a decent liberal because I wasn't yeah. on, the, on the left at all. Yes. I'm a liberal. You, so they had to persuade me. flaming Marxist. Yes. No, not at all. my <laughs> house. <laughs> <laughs> They came to my house and uh, mm. told me, you know what, we just can't sit back and uh, this Daniel Kano and yeah, you endlessly asking yeah. for a badger. And for a badger. So we needed to do something. So I said, okay, Tima, what? Tima like to drink stout. Him and Obaga. Yes. So yes. <laughs> when, uh, my wife didn't already smoking in the, in the, in the, inside the house. So, was, so I said, okay, tell me what it is. It came up yes. with this plan. I said, you guys are crazy. What do you mean? A match <laughs> in Lagos? We, we don't have the numbers, so how can yes. we do this? So they went away. Later they told me that because I said nothing, mm. that they uh, they understood that I had consented. So I, was, <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting in my office when I saw a press statement coming out of the fax machine. We had fax machines yeah. then. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. The Civil Liberties Organization, together with that, that, that announces a five million man match. And the, underneath, they put my name and signed. So, gosh, <laughs> <laughs> these guys have betrayed me. So, you see, they entrapped me to a process that I was still querying. And mm. on mm. hindsight, that was a massive, mm. massive, must. And the thing I was Chima Obadi. Chima was yeah. the chief of staff of the human mm. rights movement. All the mm. thinking came from Chima Z. Yes. All mm. the, he had formulated this. He would go read up on all the intifada things. He liked to say, what word can I use in Nigeria that will rival intifada? He wanted something <laughs> that, if you said, represented the struggle. Unfortunately, we couldn't mm. find such a name. But he mm. was the guy who planned this with Emaiza, uh, so this five billion man match thing, which yes. became the, 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 the radical engaging point. I think mm -hmm. that, that I can say is the first, because at this point, I was no longer MBA, I say MBA, CLO president, it was not IOB. Mm -hmm. 
and mm-hmm. I have been invited by, if, I'm, if I remember my history right, Clinton, and the, the, the talk by the international community changed. It was, oh, well, if uh, you guys uh, are able to stop Abacha, we'll support you. But if Abacha is able to mm. do it, then there's nothing we can do, which was the principle behind Abacha mm. taking the five political parties to go on yes, to become, absolutely. wanting to become president. So I yes. think that for me was the sweetest memory, what we did on the streets of Lagos. You know, as planned by hmm. my, my guys on the on, on the loony. Yes. On the loony. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but, did, so did, did, but just, didn't that uh, lead to your detention? Was it the moment when you were detained? Yes. Absolutely. That mm-hmm. night, that same night, mm-hmm. at the end of the at the end of the at the end of the uh, all the you know, as I said, uh, Maro had landed in Lagos and dared us to cross the line. And I said, well, you're going to see us cross the line at Evan Square. And we did. 2 p.m. on that day. I can tell yes. you that what I did was hmm. in order to reduce the fright, I had a very good bottle of Ogogoro and had a lot of water. <laughs> No, 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 no. You have to say it again. <laughs> Please, said, say it again. <laughs> to keep myself sober. I had a big bottle. It was given yes. to me by um, uh, oh, Greek, Greek, Greek. I don't know if you guys know Greek. Oh. I don't know, one of my you uh, know, loyal uh, guys, so he said, Presido, this thing, you need to uh, yeah. do something. No. Uh-huh. Since I don't do that one, uh, yeah. so what about this one? Yes. I said, I don't do it. Man, I just drink regular beer. He said, just take it. So they gave yes. me. I downed it. So yes. I, I, was on, I was on the same. Mm. When I pushed out hey. on... Uh, on the road to with my guys <laughs> behind me. Yes. And then <laughs> fortunate or unfortunate, uh, I was the first guy taken out mm. by the police with the, this gun butt to my mm. left eye. So from there they took mm. me to Panty, uh, where they put me in what they call the blind spot. Right inside inside the cell. There you are blinded. You can't no mm. light. So if they bring you out, mm. wow. you are like blinded. So it's called the blind spot in Panty police station. Hey. Then um, what happened? Wow. Then, yes. then I was taken off to. Uh, oh, hey, I was taken off to number fifteen at Wallowa Road. That's the SSS. Mm. Where was the, it? The this? SSS. Well, yes, yeah, I've been there. Came, came <laughs> yes. in mm-hmm. And in this my cell, I had the fortune to meet an SSS officer. They had forgotten they kept him there. So when they remembered, ah, the rush mm-hmm. said this officer would tell me everything, and he did. In fact, he told me that the, mm-hmm. the assistant director of the SSS that Lagos was actually uh, from Onitsha. And when he called her name, it turned out that she was the sister of my uh, sister to my uncle's wife. And you see, again, mm. that, that was sort of like a break. It was. I was, I was wondering why I was taken to help. So I was there for two weeks. Then I was moved to 11, mm. 11 um, Kingsway. By the way, the SSS had over 30 yes, uh, safe houses in Ikoi. Where they mm, came. Wow. So yes. I was in, uh, in mm. level, I was in, um, I was in uh, 15 Awala No, 15, yeah, 15 Awala for about two weeks, I guess. When they discovered that mm. we had penetrated the, the, their, their people. You know, they were, because they were, <laughs> our work was sympathetic. They were all sorry for us. You know, so mm-hmm. Abdullah was mm-hmm. able to send me things, sweet bread, you know, food. And then I decided to go on hunger strike. Mm-hmm. So one guy mm-hmm. called Femi, nice guy, he said, oh, Lisa, don't die here with my hunger strike. Oh. Just keep saying you're on hunger mm-hmm. strike. What are you eating? <laughs> so he bought me a, a D and a pepper soup. Man, it was the it was the best meal I've ever had. Hot, because I've been starving for two days, telling the world oh about God. hunger strike. He said, "But if you're eating yes. here and you say you're hunger strike, nobody will know the difference." Said, yes. Right. yes. Well, I, from there up, I went to uh, 11 um, Kingsway. I was kept there for about a month. And on my birthday, 
I said, ha, ah, the doors open. So you know, I, I always said that on May 29, I'll, I'll leave here. But when I saw the lock, the jail, the something on one Peugeot Jeep at the time, I said, no, I'm going on a long run, on a long ride. Mm-hmm. And that's how I was, I was relocated to Enugu prison. Mm-hmm. I was there until Abacha died, then we got released. Mm-hmm. Wow, so how much time did you spend in total? Uh, four months. Wow. wow. Four months. So talk, talking about the, because I asked you a question a moment ago about the price, personal price you paid. How did your family manage to be fed? Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. It's, it's just all about uh, miracles. Because now I was away, the law firm continued. Whether it was mm. out of sympathy, I don't know. But mm. it wasn't mm. as if, I mean, the business and the money level would have dropped. But clearly, uh, when I came back, I saw all of them. Oh, yeah, because wow. the SSS came and destroyed our office. You know, oh, my gosh. Tore down the, the systems, removed all the, uh, what do you call it, the brain box of our various computers. But, mm. you know, I had a good managing partner who was able to sort of keep things going and, mm-hmm. you know, would give uh, money to uh, to my family. So somehow mm. they got along, even though my wife now abused me when I came back, say, look, <laughs> next time don't do this. So. Because I had exactly... <laughs> Huh? Exactly twenty one thousand naira in my account when I wow. came and said, "Look at you, see what you've put me through." That was the only time she ever, you know, you know, that sort of like complained about what she'd been through. <laughs> yes. you know, we are today is all part of history. It's in life. Uh, a history history that you must write. Let me under underline. Sure, sure, you must sure, sure. write. Yes, yes write please. It. Yes. Uh, we, so yes. Yeah, we write it. Sure, so, I mean, given all this, sorry, given all these struggles, how would you say um, everything you're describing, um, even your pillars as well? How would you say that has informed um, today's democracy overall? Um, you know, I, I know you kind of touched on it already to some degree, but um, but how would you just look at? How would you sum it up and say today the struggles you went through? How is it? How is it? Um, um, because I mean, there's something like something that you said that is very pertinent in terms of how for democracy got a slot and how it became. Uh, I mean, that was its launching part, I guess, to becoming more of a juggernaut in the southwest. Um, yeah. Those kind of things. So, I mean, if you could give us a more, if there are any other details rather that you could have it, uh, make it a more holistic picture in terms of how yeah, that sure. happened. So as I said, you know, I thought that was a strategic error, but you know, uh, my guys on the left, you know, being dissatisfied, sort of like now a drift began to occur. Mm-hmm. But I said maybe I could find friends in the in the AD. So my early relationship with Tinubu was there because he was one of us. He was mm-hmm. he was on exile last. So uh, when he indicated interests we we came around and packaged him as a human rights democracy uh activist i was in the room in the early days of mm-hmm. the political struggle for his uh, emergence as governor mm-hmm. he was not the favored candidate of Lagosians. it was actually the late um femi i just forgot his name now femi pedro it... no, no, pedro. Pedro. no not not it... pedro um, he was he was assassinated. Oh, follow Runsha, follow Runsha. Yes, for, for, so uh, for sure Williams. For sure, Williams. Oh, for sure, for, yes. for sure Williams. Sorry. Yeah, yes. So he was assassinated. So that, but before he was, he was the guy who would have been governor. But mm-hmm. when he saw that this is in a room, when he saw that he wasn't carrying the support, he said, "All right, I'm off." So that cleared the way for for. Mm-hmm. Um, for uh, Tidubu to emerge. Mm-hmm. Whether that was in our interest, you know, it, it's not a matter of history. But that, mm-hmm. was, <laughs> that was part of the early engagement. And then mm-hmm. we now became sort of disoriented because before we could identify the firing line, the soldiers were here, who we were here. But now that we had democracy, I think that was the biggest challenge in confronting how uh, the ideology of the struggle would be 
mm-hmm. we are rotated. Mm-hmm. I think that was mm-hmm. the biggest problem because we were used to an enemy. Now that's done. Yes. We were fighting mm-hmm. for democracy. Now you have it. So what again do you mm-hmm. want? If you keep shouting, yeah. the but you have democracy now. So but it's not real mm-hmm. democracy. So that became a very, you know, defining moment. And I think as time went on, led to the to the irrelevance of uh, civil society. And mm. as you know, as time went on, the CLO began to go down. So I think it was the failure to re-identify mm-hmm. uh, who we needed to engage and confront. Mm-hmm. Of course, the politicians. That was the mm-hmm. you know signal decline of the of, of the relevance of the civil society uh, process. Mm-hmm. So, so the CLO began as an organization that uh, fought for impover- impoverished Nigerians. Excuse me. No, no, prisoners. It's, prisoners. Imp- imp- impoverished prisoners. Yes. Uh, some of them being held in detention for, for, for a long time for offenses sure. that uh, some of the offenses were indeed um, fairly benign offenses. Sure. Uh, yes. Sure. Um, that problem, I understand, persists till today. Sure. Uh, that there are lots and lots of Nigerians who are held in detention, uh, sometimes sure. because they're outside their homes as the police are making a sweep through the night and yep. they are, you know, uh, packed up and taken, taken in and often yeah. nobody knows why they're there. Yeah. What are your proposals? Uh, what proposals do you have for addressing such violations of people's mm. basic rights in Nigeria today? No, we've gone beyond that. What has happened is, and that's part of what gives me great pleasure, because I see so many guys, I don't even know them, mm-hmm. but when you see CLO. So what has happened is that CLO was the general mm-hmm. human rights, data, uh, pro-democracy uh, movement. And then it's splintered into, in fact, I don't think that you would find anyone today in the uh, technical human rights movement. Ours was political and pro-democracy. So when I say technical, I refer to women's rights, prisoners' rights, like Kuju mm-hmm. Agombo, it's been fantastic. Mm-hmm. So there is no need now for me to worry about the specifics. There are so many groups in prison work. In fact, I just saw mm-hmm. one the other day on TV. I said, ah, that's good. I haven't, I haven't seen this guy for years. So I've, I've evolved and left uh, look at uh, Innocent Chukuma. Mm-hmm. So when we were yes. doing police work, when he, when he started clean, we didn't need to do that. Uh, look at uh, Ed Eta Ojo. When he started MRA, we didn't need to do that. We were, the, we were the founders of all these processes. We first wrote the what has mm-hmm. now become the Freedom of Information um, mm-hmm. legislation. Then we said, Ed, Ed, since you are a journalist, you understand this. Take this and run. Uh, would you have gone on, since you are into the take power, take it and run. Uh, that, that, that. So that's mm-hmm. what has happened. So mm-hmm. the CLO is the mother of virtually 100% of what you see today. Rasanjani in uh, Abuja, you know, in Sislak, uh, mm-hmm. our brother uh, and co-founder of the CLO, who is in Prague in Abuja, there's hardly anyone you will call whose roots are not in the CLO. So my point mm-hmm. is, I'm the grandfather of the movement. As a yes. grandfather, I'm entitled to have a, a retiring meal. Let my guys, let my guys, let my guys carry on from where we, where we, and they come talk, <laughs> they come here and we chat and talk. So that's what answers your question. So there's no need for me to mm-hmm. be worried about, you know, parenting. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm my grandfather. Mm-hmm. So the parents, mm-hmm. the different organizations are the ones carrying the struggle forward. Yes. So with that, as well as you said that, right now, what would you say over, as especially as a grandfather, what would you say over is the biggest, are the biggest civil liberties issues, uh, human rights and civil liberties issues in Nigeria today? Lack of genuine democracy. That's the problem. Mm. You know, democracy oscillates. So you had, you can go from um, authoritarian to semi-authoritarian to illiberal to liberal. So from the time of the soldiers, when we were all under authoritarian processes, we evolved to what I would like to call semi-authoritarian. But we've been oscillating from mm-hmm. uh, from semi-authoritarian to illiberal and back mm-hmm. to semi-authoritarian. So we had Obasanjo illiberal, then we went to 
the next big thing, uh, Buhari, uh, authoritarian. Now we're waiting to see, are we moving forward? Are we going to move to a liberal? Because Nigeria is not a liberal democracy. You don't have strong institutions. You don't have strong civil society. So what I'd like to see is how we can move to the third level of a truly liberal democracy where the rule of law has meaning, where someone like President uh, Trump can be in the dock, a Nigerian President Doc, uh, Trump. When I see President Trump in the dock, I say, that's the power of a, a liberal democracy, yeah. where the media mm -hmm. is working, where the, mm -hmm. everything is working. Here, it's not possible. So that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the challenge that I, I pose to the you know, civil institutions. And not just uh, human rights, traditional rulers, mm -hmm. uh, the churches all together. We have, I remember telling um, um, uh, which Archbishop now, I said, you know what, if that crazy guy who was, not, I'm not sure whether he was on the left or on the right, well, it was Chido Dinkado, he used to come up with a lot of ideas. I remember his yes. vigil, vigil for democracy. Uh, mm. He wanted us to sit out at um, Morocco and mm. it ended up in a big disaster because only nine people showed. Only nine of oh, us. Wow. We had put out 300 chairs or so. So I sat down there, <laughs> beaten by mosquitoes, <laughs> sipping whiskey, <laughs> sipping whiskey from my from my from my whiskey flask. You know those whiskey flasks? Yes. <laughs> so I, so I hope that will not repeat. We need mm -hmm. to have energy. That we need to have the energy today yes. to create a vision for democracy, mm. and then if we can push that energy together. So that we can do what Professor Wabeze calls the notion of limited government. So if mm. you're in government, as president or as governor, you don't say, I can't do anything. No, the constitution yeah, yeah. limits you. That's mm -hmm. a big problem. Today, yes. we nobody. The, 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 look at the Reverend Father, the Reverend Father of the Catholic Church, of all people, dissolving the local government in Benue State. So what's wrong with this man? What's wrong with you? Your powers are limited. So mm -hmm. once you become governor, ah, that's, that's, that's it too. It's a job time. You forget mm -hmm. the rule of law. Nothing works. So that's mm -hmm. the challenge. If we can yes. really fight for a liberal democratic process, mm -hmm. then I think we would have arrived. Because this is a great yes. country. Great mm -hmm. opportunities, you know. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, so you are a senior advocate of Nigeria. And I dare say that you became a senior advocate uh, at a time when that designation had grandeur, uh, yeah. not so much today. Right. Uh, you also were the president of the Nigerian Bar Association and right. uh, a distinguished one. And that association has had a number of really distinguished presidents. There's this perception today that um, perhaps quite a few, if not the majority of uh, the leaders of that association um, f find themselves sponsored by forces outside of the legal circles, by political forces and so on. Mm. So, what's your perception of what has happened uh, to that mm. very right. noble uh, mm. profession of yours. Yeah. yeah, it's the broad process of the decline I'm describing, where mm -hmm. the uh, moral values of the struggle have been replaced by other things, considerations. Mm -hmm. So you can hire, you can, you can hire anybody. Anything can happen, you know. Uh, so, I mean, at least in fairness to the MBA, at least it's still there. Where's the enemy? Where's mm, the NUT? Mm, They're all gone. Mm, mm, so that is the NBA. In fairness, it's not what it ought to be. But the, the, the reason for the decline is this... Uh, what uh, was the governor of uh, the Kitty called again? Um, yeah, was, no. The one who was the former one. I carried them. Fire or share. Fire, fire share, okay. Fire share, like, yes. He invented the stomach of infrastructure. Stomach infrastructure. Yeah. So, what can you do? You can't go anywhere and make an issue of anything. Mm. You can't. People are interested in money. If you talk, money is what talks everywhere mm. in Nigeria. Money is the is is as has become the 
the what do I call it now? The demon that has played hmm. the country. Not hmm. issues, not ideas. So if I mean, look at uh, uh, my brother in in, in Kaduna, Shewusani, the brilliant uh, uh, senator. Because he was mm-hmm. talking, every fly, they made sure they took him out. So if you mm-hmm. talk, you're out. So if you want to be in mm-hmm. politics, ah, it's difficult to. It's mm-hmm. difficult. You find a lot of compromises. So the way to go, I think, strategically, is to say, what are the chances of rebuilding? It's not going to be easy. What are the chances of rebuilding civil society? And by civil society, mm-hmm. I don't just mean the human rights, but the, the whole process. The traditional mm-hmm. rulers, the churches, mm-hmm. all of, how do we come together? That's mm-hmm. been the worrying thing, you know, that keep engages me. But whenever mm-hmm. I see what's going on, it's it's not nice. It's not it's always mm-hmm. very look at the judiciary. All gone. The mm-hmm. judiciary of the Adagolos, of the Dibes, of the Obasekis, yes. gone. I mean, mm-hmm. they keep giving decisions that you can't make any sense of what they are saying. So if mm-hmm. the judiciary itself, you know plagued by the perception of you guys are not what you used to be then hmm. mba is just a is a little thing the whole mm-hmm. judiciary where mm-hmm. you expect justice and you can't expect it so mm-hmm. you see the challenge that we face the Herculean challenge to which i don't have any answers wow. as you speak mm-hmm. yeah given what you said um in terms of the structures in the judiciary um even the church um so how hopeful are you of, of achieving human rights record in Nigeria? And I don't know, I always remember, I don't know, because when, when, when it comes to this question, I always remember, I don't know if you ever used to come and give us uh, talks at Opus Day when I was a kid, but sure, sure, when sure, I was sure. younger. Yeah, yes, sure, sure, exactly. Sure. I always used to sit down with you quite often. At at Census um, Clues, um, number six, Census Clues, you always used sure, to pop sure, in sure. and um, yeah, sure. give us sure. talks with one for yeah. Yeah. Um, all those other guys, they weren't they were obviously in, in Spain, but yeah, there were there are still other people that continue to mantle the YouTube. So, this is this because you, you talked, you used to talk about you know, and all these kind of things. Yeah. So, and you're talking about these things in terms of societies, um, what's well, the market infrastructure? Yes, so, how yeah. many people are you overall of, of um, achieving, giving everything, even down to the people in this on the streets, the regular? Average person. Um, mm. so I personally believe that um, majority of Nigerians, eighty percent of Nigerians, are just the next, um, are just the next person waiting to slide into office if possible. Um, mm. Even though they have statistically, they have like a zero point zero zero percent chance of ever holding political office, and you know, but how how, how insane are you that down from the top to the bottom, institutions to people and everything? How insane are you of ever achieving this thing? I'm not actually, but I just say mm-hmm. to myself, it would be terrible if, if, if I allow the light to, 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 to quench out. Because if mm-hmm. you on the facts, you know, if, if you're a surgeon and you have a cancer patient and you see the cancer mm-hmm. patient is at stage five, you know, uh, condition, you just say, ah, there's something they call uh, bedside manners in medicine. You don't tell. Mm-hmm. The family, well, look, this guy ain't gonna survive. Mm-hmm. But you just tell them, well, you know, I had a partner who passed up ten years ago of cancer. So they called me and said, don't tell the family, but you know what to do? Just come, take her home, keep her warm, make sure she's good. And the son called me to say they need get money for diesel, which we sent. But in the morning she died. But well, we had hope. Mm-hmm. So we had hope the night before. So I would mm. not want to look at the Nigerian problem in a broad perspective because I can't see any hope. Mm. So what I do is to take a limited view. So sometimes when I hear politicians speak, I go, oh, well, you see, I tell my, my wife says, oh, you see, you see. So uh, the, the candle, the flames of the candle are extremely weak, but we don't want it to extinguish. Mm. But on the facts, <laughs> it's going to be a long time. Because mm. the entire place is awash with what uh, Professor Richard Joseph calls pre-bendal politics. That's chop chop. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> what do you think again? Pre-bendal pre-bend- politics. Pre-bendal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Pre-bendalism. Yes. Okay. So, and you have the plutocrats in the business world fueling pre-bendal politics. So there's a, a chaotic 
symbiotic relationship where business fuels politics and politics pays back when they get into power. So mm. where what is the chance of a strong guy, you know, speaking on the fringes of this process, making any impact? On who? Mm -hmm. You mean mm -hmm. just you just be like a, a John the Baptist speaking in the wilderness. Nobody wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wanted to listen. So no, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is a massive challenge, and yes. I don't think any Nigerian can give you an answer where we will be because tomorrow you might suddenly find it changes. The rain mm -hmm. stops. <laughs> you see. Yes. So that's the hope I have. But right yes. now the rain is falling thunderously mm -hmm. in Nigeria. It's mm -hmm. breaking apart everywhere. So we are managing to, you know. Keep hope alive, you know. You drive to work, and you don't even know whether you can to go back. Look what happened in Kaduna: soldiers mm. bombing out uh, civilians, and who says a mistake, and the, oh. in, the result is hundred and something people dead. So mm. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. having said that, though, I will be hopeful, and I, have, I, yeah. I still have my I still have my tie on at least. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I can go to the restaurant and have it. That shows you the resilience of Nigerians. Hmm. Bank, I think, is the strongest factor left. When IBB said, I don't know how this will survive, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a strength we have. And I yes. think that, that strength is also part of the fact that we are so used not to having governments. Mm -hmm. One day, when we were doing a seminar, uh, a, you know, a town hall organized by this state, on this issue of the uh, fuel subsidy removal. So it was uh, Sanusi, Ngozi Okonjewala, uh, Dezani persuading us that it was necessary to remove it. So my point mm -hmm. was, I think I was probably 60 then. I said, you know, mm -hmm. since I was born, the government has not done anything for me. Yeah. No, no medical, no nothing. So till today, at 70 now, nothing. And I can assure you that 99% of Nigerians do not feel the government. If there was suddenly mm -hmm. a massive earthquake in Abuja and all of them were to disappear, here we we'll notice it because we're in the yeah. informal sector. We're mm -hmm. in the informal sector and that's what keeps Nigeria going. Not the formal mm -hmm. sector. It's the informal mm -hmm. sector that is 90% yeah. of the Nigerian economy. So I think that's what drives the process. So there's, mm -hmm. this, there's this fake idea that Nigeria is really moving, but it's not. It's not. We all hide on that informal process to stay alive. Yeah, uh, just to add to that question, there, you know, like some people hate sports analogies. I, I use them from time to time, but mm. there's something it's all in combat sports where they say you're too tough for your own good. Sure. You know, somebody gets a, a beating, yes. um, you know, that they shouldn't have gotten. If yeah. they had just gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Like Nigeria needs to absolutely inquire and let's let's figure right. out something else or something. Yeah, that's a brilliant analogy. Brilliant mm -hmm. analogy. Yeah, yes. brilliant. A strong yes. guy, you know. You say, "What will make this man go down?" You keep punching yes. him in sand. Yes. You know, that's the yeah. resilience. That, Nigerians are tough people. If you, mm -hmm. if, if this condition were to exist in where you are in the US, <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> the whole place will collapse. Oh Look yes. At, Look at COVID. Look at under COVID. Yes. We survived. But yes. look at what happened in America. There are dying uh, like groups. And part of mm. why we survived in, with COVID is because we're already in the COVID system. We eat food from the gutter anyway, every day. Yes. So not this COVID. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we're there. So you are saying yes. COVID. Yes. Yeah, what's COVID? We've been in COVID forever. Yes. We've been yes. in COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the ironic so, advantage that we have, mm, which is a big shame. So, it is a big shame. Yeah, what you just said resonated with me um, in 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 a powerful way because for 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 some time now, people will ask me if I give talks. You know, are you? Um, do you have any hope for Nigeria? And my answer is always a simple yes. Uh, and I say to them, because hope is an emotional response. Sure, um, sure. It doesn't have to be undergird by any factors. I said, but if mm. you ask me, am I optimistic? Optimism sure. is a more rational uh, domain. So I'll yeah. say, no, I can, you can't be optimistic if you, look at, if you look at the, the picture in Nigeria. Yeah. Nothing 
in the country inspires optimism. But sure, hope sure. is like faith. I say, I believe yeah. in God. I have faith in God. If you sure. say to me, okay, prove the existence of God, yes. you've got me. You know, yeah. I can't. I can only prove the existence of God in an emotional way, right? Or, sure. you know, I think sure. I was in a bad place and I prayed and I got out of it. Sure. So sure. I believe that God helped me. Sure. That's so, a very good. I like that. I'll, I'll, I'll use yeah. it. Faith. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> and, so is, and, hope, and I say this. Yes, please. You say again, hope and what? You said two things. Hope and, hope and hope optimism. And optimism. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. optimistic, but I'm sure, hopeful. Sure, sure. You know, I, 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 uh, because optimism demands, uh, you can see rational, you can say, okay, sure, sure. these are the grounds on which sure. you are. Uh, you base your optimism, but you know there are no grounds to be optimistic. Absolutely. But, you Absolutely. know we can choose. Yes. Uh, it's like what I tell I told students at the University of Port Harcourt years ago when I came there to speak, yes. and the students said, "Oh, you know, you write so fearlessly. So we thought you would be scared to come into Nigeria." And I said to them, just on a half, I said, "Well, fear is a choice, and mm -hmm. I've chosen not to fear." Yes. And um, so it's like hope is also a choice. I've chosen to be hopeful, sure. but I sure. cannot defend that hope in a rational way. Yeah, I understand you it. know, I yeah, understand it. you know, understand and it. it's another way to sort of speak about uh, my experience. I was in Nigeria. I visited Nigeria in March, and people were complaining in March that a bag of rice was eight thousand naira. Yes, and I was again in Nigeria in October. And um, I was speaking to a relative in Arca, and she said to me that she went to buy a bag of rice. It was now 56,000. Yeah. So when Americans complain of inflation, they say, oh, fuel used to sell for $2. Now it's $2.10. <laughs> nah. People are complaining. <laughs> so now nah. you have the bag of rice within a few months going yes. from 10,000 naira to 56,000. And to go to the point that my co-host and make a maid. Yes. You say Nigerians should be on the floor. They should have been knocked out. Absolutely. But somehow this Christmas, you're going to see people eat a lot of rice. Sure. And you wonder, how <laughs> is that? it that we continue to sustain all these blows oh. that would lead to all kinds of you know, crises as, as yeah. uh, Muhammad Ali faced in his yeah. later life? Sure. Sure. And, and we're still standing. We're standing, yes. taking it. Yes. Yeah. When is it that people are going to say, well, we've taken enough. We're going to demand something of our leadership. That's what would question. it take? That's yeah. That's the big, big, big question. That's, mm -hmm. you know, don't, you know, in that case, you are looking at how much of the voting population, mm -hmm. the information, are they informed? Because that's mm -hmm. where it leads to. Uh, there was something I watched, you know, very uh, on TikTok, you know, and so the guy was some, I think some kind of prophet was speaking to someone who I, came I, to. Okay, I see? think I think we lost you for a minute. So if you can go back to the the, the TikTok, right, Emeka? We yes, we yes, lost, yes. Yeah. So so we lost you for a little bit. So so I was talking about um, how is it that we get on here, and so that guy. Uh, it was a montage of the prophet and and the, the Nigerian seeking for assistance. And yes. so Nigeria, you've got everything. You have water. You so the guy, the, the prophet was shocked. I can't help you. You have everything. So that's our mm. problem here. You know that we have everything, but how is it being processed into the general mm. population? It is not. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you might have two hundred million Nigerians. But are mm -hmm. they really in a position to make informed decisions? Yeah. Because that's what is required. The ability to make informed decisions. Even with the madness of Trump, he's been confronted by a very strong institutional process that has stopped his madness. Mm -hmm. So who is able to do that here? When will we have that sort of strong process and institutions that can say enough is enough? But mm -hmm. that, that, that happens to the question you're asking. So mm -hmm. we'll have hope. So mm -hmm. if I put on my hopeful cap, I don't yes. <laughs> <laughs> so like if I put on my optimistic cap, I, I can't see the fundamentals. Yes. If I'm buying shares in X company and they said 
it's valued at 10 naira. So tell me why it's 10 naira. Mm -hmm. So they said it's 10 naira and I buy it. Mm -hmm. But I want to know what are the fundamentals and they are mm -hmm. known and the shares crash to one naira. Then it's my fault. Mm -hmm. But I'll hope. Mm -hmm. But as you say, and I like this point, if you put on your optimistic cap, then Nigeria is in for a long, long journey of desolation. There's no question yes. about it. Mm -hmm. But that'll be like this for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, you still have a couple of things. I know you, you've been very generous with your time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's maybe maybe, maybe we we we'll do one question each, and uh, because okay. he's been very very generous, thank yeah. you very much. You've been extremely okay. generous. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. We'll get, to, we'll get together <laughs> if uh, we're, we're bit in uh, this thing. Well, we'll come and sit down and down. Uh, yeah, we, we actually. Can't, 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 can't. Yeah, he and he, he and I will be in Nigeria together in January, <laughs> so oh, yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll oh. stop by. Sure, sure, that's great. Yes. And that's so, great. so just uh, um, just a uh, uh, simple questions. Um, I was going to have a, a bunch of much tougher, but since we are yeah. we're trying to round up, I, I just want to keep it light. Um, I, 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 I mean, I like to keep it light. I like to ask these kind of this this kind of question. Yeah. So, what, what would you say is your um, favorite food, favorite song right now? <laughs> A uh, favorite, favorite place to visit or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sure. Favorite, favorite, song, favorite song, favorite movie, put it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. No, you see, as you get older, you lose interest in food. When you get to my age, you'll find, you'll find that food is not really... So I can eat anything that, you know, catches my fancy, even though I'm a difficult person to 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 give a meal, because I can switch. I can switch yes. from one thing to the other. So I generally am not a big eater. So I'm, I'm not... Mm -hmm. I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm not, what's the word now? I'm not a uh, hot on food. So long mm -hmm. as it's nice and small. I'm hot on my whiskey, I must tell you. Yes. I like <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I gave up smoking 30 years yes. ago. So I like to, you know, banter with my friends, you know, we have a bar we go to in Ikoi, have a good meal or drink after work, relax. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm a kind of, introverted person more at home watch netflix doc docu series things like that read heavy books if, mm. if it's a if it's a light thing i don't like to read it if it's like three four hundred pages uh -huh. I, I like to put my teeth into that so i read i do a lot of reading and a lot of watching mm -hmm. of a, a prime video uh netflix or anything that is you know political economic anything about thought thought leadership those sorts of things i enjoy what was, the, what was the last book that you read or you're reading right now? I've read so many that sometimes I get confused. In my car, I have about 20 yes. books. I get confused. There's that, one... That's my situation. <laughs> yeah. That... And to be honest with you, what I've also done, because if you read, 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 and read, and read, and read, and you don't see how all what, because a lot of these heavy things you're reading, but you don't, mm -hmm. you say, why is it that it's not applying? So the knowledge base is higher than what's on ground. So you then mm. get a reverse cycle of saying, I'm not reading anymore, bro. I'm tired. <laughs> so I mean that I mean that yes. too. I mean yes. that sort of situation where I'm absolutely tired of theories, tired. You yes. know, so I said mm. give me a break. So I've gone into yes. uh, uh, Netflix. I'm watching one night silly movie now called The uh, Young Sheldon. I'm watching oh, yeah. Co -co 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 what? <laughs> Huh? You know it? Yeah, yes, yeah. I do. The CBS here. It's actually very funny. Young I Sheldon. It. Um, I'm looking there for was uh, the Big Bang Theory before that that preceded it. It uh, but, was also very funny. Absolutely. But, so those that's are, cool. you just chill out and relax and say, look, let the world be outside. You know, yes. I've reconstructed my study. I see all the books. Uh, books. Look, give me a break. Let me. <laughs> let me, let me relax. So that's what. That's what is playing out with me too much in the head mm. too much mm. sometimes i have yes. to the towel to cool my head you know oh <laughs> my gosh oh my gosh mm. so let me claim uh first of all uh when you say books stay in your place in your lane um not before you've given us so i hope you find time mm -hmm. from your netflixing to write your story because it's so important and part of what gives me hope i tell people is is that we tell our stories 
sure. when we gather, you gather with the with the with the elders, and they tell you their stories. And I think that yeah. those stories inform uh, are going to shape the future, sure, you know, sure. in one way or another. So stories are important. In fact, they um, my favorite line in any books that I've written is where a grandmother says to her grandson, a story that must be told, never forgive silence. So okay. I'd like to propose to you that you have an important story to tell or feel about your life, your, the struggles you've been engaged in, and the difference that you've made in the world. And so that story will not forgive you if you remain <laughs> silent about it. So, so we're demanding that you write it. So really? having said that, so so let me sort of end by asking a more serious question. So you've been sort of enmeshed in some controversy lately. You know, people when when you uh, criticize lawyers for mm. uh, their prejudging of the presidential sure. um, yeah. verdict, the the verdict on the presidential election. People, of course, the Nigerian typical thing is to say, "Oh, have you collected?" You know. Because yeah. somebody like you, I've known you for years, for decades, I can vouch for your integrity and so on. But you've got into some controversy. And I think there is something yeah. which I haven't quite understood that happened just in the last day or two. Uh, could you speak to... Look, yes. you know, sometimes could you speak to that? is a mess. Maybe I, in fact, maybe I shouldn't have, but you see, I can't help to speak. So, Dr. Yunusa was on TV, mm -hmm. being interviewed by Charles Anayagolo, and he was wondering mm -hmm. why is it that they didn't have their own judgment, that is, Labour Party appeal judgment, they didn't come down. Mm -hmm. So he was talking, and I saw mm -hmm. that he was confusing two, two things. There is something in the Supreme Court called the abide by the judgment principle. So if there are Three cases. In fact, the last one I was involved in, there were three cases, all alike. The Supreme Court took one and said, this judgment will abide by the other two. So I think mm. uh, Dr. Yunusa uh, was challenging the notion of the concept of that principle. Well, it's well established. Mm. Anyone who was practicing the Supreme Court would know it. It's a mm -hmm. clear example of how the court preserves time and saves energy. But the real issue he was actually, I think, trying to point out was mm -hmm. that the two judgments or the two cases or the two appeals are not the same. And that's why I said you have a point. And what mm -hmm. you need to do, rather than moan on TV, is to ask the Supreme Court to clarify. Because mm -hmm. the, the two judgments, the PDP... Uh, the PDP uh, appeal petition is different from other label. So I don't see how they abide by principle would apply. Mm -hmm. That was the point I was trying to make. You know, anyone who mm -hmm. goes and listens, even Dr. Yunusa didn't contest what I was saying. Mm -hmm. but I don't know how um, the lady who now challenged me said, and I was sort of like saying, should I even reply? But we, we mm -hmm. just put it in. So I put in my, my, uh, my own side. I want more bashing. I know. You know it's, 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 it's something like you were you were on the side of um, um, the, they felt like you flip flopped. They felt yeah. um, they, because you had clearly you were one of the people who had come out and clearly said uh, it was very nice and I, I like the way you had come out and said it like you don't really understand this class. So, Mm -hmm. anymore. This uh, this this generation of of um, of uh, yeah. Jews anymore, yeah. and yeah. it's something not just you. A lot of people, a lot of people, yeah. um, that echoed even at the time mm -hmm. you know, Supreme Court justice had echoed. So yeah, people thought you flip flopped from saying, oh, "Okay, now yeah, you are, you, are, you are kind of practicing economy of the stomach." Yeah, which is the default, no, the default Nigerian position. Yeah, you, no, all you've was, taken all something, was, yeah. All I was trying to point out was the principle of the abide by judgment does in fact exist. That was all, mm -hmm. not no more no less. Which I think Dr. Unisa didn't quite uh, get because he kept modeling the concept of what, with what happened to him. So what happened to him was, look, our, our appeal was so different. What was before the Supreme Court on 
the question of uh, President Tinubu's. Uh, okay. I, uh, I I think the line the line was broken, right? So, yes, it was. So, yes. So we we lost you for a yeah. bit. So if you can, well, right? Yes. I was just saying that um, sometimes when things like this, you know, arise you say to yourself, do I just keep quiet? Because I do that all the time on on a rise. I just, if something is going on, I think it's not correct. I, I, I send a, a text message to whoever. So this was Charles and I go to, so I could see clearly that you know, sir, who is not a lawyer. They didn't understand the principle of the abide by judgment principle. So my main point of intervening was to make clear that principle exists. Don't question it. What you should question is whether it applies mm -hmm. to you. Because your case, mm -hmm. the Labour Party appeal, is completely different from the, that of the PDP. So I suggested mm -hmm. to him that what you ought to do is apply to the Supreme Court for clarification. That's just simple English, which mm -hmm. led to this blowout, mm -hmm. you know, by some uh, <laughs> social media influencer. But I don't care, you know. I don't yeah. I'm not looking for... I'm not looking for popularity, you know. Anyone can think what they mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. If I feel strongly about something, like when I felt strongly about, uh, um, what, do, what do you call it? You need to have a quarter of the votes in uh, two-thirds of 36 states uh -huh. and Abuja. Yes. But the Supreme Court took a different view. But I say, as far as I'm concerned, it's simple English. It's simple mm -hmm. English. So the fact that I might get flack from anybody would not stop me from saying it. And I don't pretend yeah. that I'll always be right, but I will say it nonetheless. And I, I think yes. that's what is, is is important in critical conversation. Don't feel don't feel um, scared to, to air your views because you'll be criticized mm -hmm. on social media or elsewhere. Yeah. If that happens, yes. then society is dead. Mm -hmm. I I must say though, you know that the fact that you are not rattled, uh, for me, I now understand it because you are in a lot of ways. A soldier in law. Not at all. A, wow. Yes. I've been bashed by everybody. Yes. I've been bashed by Labour Party. Yes. I've been bashed by PDP. I've been bashed by APC. Even <laughs> when uh, this, I said there is nothing like an interim government, and Tinubu mm -hmm. is entitled to be sworn in. Mm -hmm. The Labour Party obedience went after me, tore me to pieces. I said, well, you can yes. say what you like, but there is no place in the constitution for an interim uh, uh, government. So what we might need mm -hmm. to do is amend the electoral process so that all election wahala will end before uh, inauguration. Yes, we're in it. Yeah. Yes. But where do you find the, 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 the constitutional principle that uh, President Tinubu would not be sworn in, merely because mm -hmm. there are appeals pending? No. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I make comments of that nature, the Labour guys come after me. When I make comments in relation to uh, FCT must be one, the Tinubu people come after me. I don't care. I'm mm. too old to care about what people think, so long as I say <laughs> out of my own, you know, conscience yes. and with innocence. Yes. That's all I care about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have Please. so many many questions for you. It's just uh, but, so I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. missing it. We're hoping well, that you. Uh, we can do it. We can do a part. Can part. <laughs> yes, we, we need we, to do we, a part. We, we, yeah, we'll yeah. do it in Lagos. We need to do a part two. Yes, great. Yes. We need to do a part two. Yeah, sure. And, uh, well, yeah. All right. So we really appreciate your time. Uh, you are uh, more fun than I, I remember. Uh, at 12.30, <laughs> uh, I remember you coming to give me talks before I was 10. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, even more fun than I remember. You were saying them, by the way. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, 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 I appreciate that. We look forward to part two and um, have a great day. Um, Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. And the, okay. we need to, you need to put it on the schedule. Okay. Yes. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it over whiskey. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Thank you, my brother. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rebecca. Right. Thank you.